God.
you set the limits that they should not pass, and shall not gain again cover the earth. O Lord, command the Lord of your works, and listen to the faith of all. Declare it to swallow your
you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, for it is those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom he recognized as the rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not among you, for whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You've seen the bumper sticker or the meme. What if the hokey pokey is what it's all about? <laughs> <laughs> Hold that thought for a minute. <laughs> when I was in Colorado this summer, we worshiped at the Eagle River Presbyterian Church near Vail, where my family attends. Rob Wilson was in his last weeks as their pastor. He was preaching a series of what I've always wanted to tell you. I thought it was a splendid idea. <laughs> so today and for the next three Sundays, I shall try to do something similar. So this morning, I want you to know that the hokey pokey is not what it's all about. In the chapters of Mark's Gospel that we've read over the past few weeks, Jesus has been doing his best to tell and to show the disciples what following him and leading in his name meant. Just prior to the words Diane proclaimed this morning, we are told that Jesus and the crowd were on the road again, heading toward Jerusalem. And he took the twelve aside and told them for the third time that he was about to be handed over to the chief priests and scribes. He would be condemned to death, handed over to the Gentiles, mocked, spit on, flogged, and killed, and would rise in three days. According to Mark, it is at that very moment that James and John approached Jesus, asking him to do whatever they asked of him. Specifically, that he give them places of honor at his left and right sides. Now, I can't help but wonder whether the thought at least crossed Jesus' mind. What? Have you even been listening to what I've been saying? But he didn't. Instead, he asked them if they could share in his cup and in his baptism, perhaps prefiguring not only the cup of the blood he would shed for them, but the cup he asked God to take away from him in the Garden of Gethsemane. The baptism not only of cleansing, but of dying to self and being reborn. And then he patiently told them yet again what it meant to follow him, to be a slave and servant of all, to be last, not first. Because that was how they were, offer, were to offer another way to the world, 
a way that was not like the domination and tyranny of the empire. A way of love, as Bishop Curry calls it. A way that is really the core of Jesus' message, the substance of what it means to follow him and to lead in his name. This basic message, repeated so many times, is not only for the Twelve. It was for those who would be reading or hearing this gospel in the years following Jesus' death and resurrection. Those who would know that the individuals at Jesus' right and left were two thieves on a cross. To those people of Mark's time and to us in today's world, where many have lost sight of the radical nature of Jesus' ministry and teachings, we need to know that to dare to call ourselves Christians means accepting a world that has been turned upside down from what we're accustomed to. A world that is not about accumulating wealth, not about building a power base and rising in the hierarchy, not about gaining the status that allows us to have others serving us, doing the scut work so we can focus on what is really important. It's not really hard to understand James and John. They may have been so frightened by what Jesus predicted about what would happen in Jerusalem that they jumped right to the glory part. Even if it's just that they were oblivious. They no doubt are clinging to the popular notion that when the Messiah comes, he will rout the Roman oppressors and bring back the kingdom of David. So when Jesus comes to power, he will need deputies or a cabinet. And these two want to be at that boardroom table. We can understand the outrage of the other disciples too, who also would want a piece of the action. After all, who wouldn't? It feels good to be singled out, recognized, given places of honor, doesn't it? So what does all of this mean for us? Being a servant, or worse yet, a slave, is not exactly popular. We learn from an early age to speak up for ourselves to seek achievement, position, power, and places of honor. That is called ambition and success. Now it's not that we aren't supposed to aspire to great things, for of course we are to use the gifts that we are given. It's more about how we go about our work. Is it out of joy or out of duty? Do we get where we want to go by stepping on others or throwing around our weight or seeking deals and special privileges? One of the problems that we face in our world is how Jesus' lesson has been misused. Only some have been expected to selflessly serve. For example, women, people of color often fade into the woodwork as their job is to be unselfish, doing for others, downplaying themselves and their gifts. No, Jesus' message was about those with power, not those who are oppressed, serving others. We are not called to submerge ourselves in order to be Christian doormats to satisfy the needs of the powerful. Jesus' model of servant leadership was not to do what others want you to do. In fact, at times, it's quite the opposite. It is serving in God's name, being faithful to God's word, and drawing others into God's realm by such things as speaking out against injustice and calling leaders to accountability opening doors wide to welcome and invite others, using our work to lift up the people rather than using them or lording over them. There's something else 
I don't think some of our churches have done us any favors by emphasizing the glory instead of the way. That if we behave in certain ways, believe in certain things, we will be rewarded in the next life. Instead of teaching us from the get-go of the joys and the wholeness that is grounded in the love of God and one another. That though there will be challenges and setbacks and sacrifices, as well as rewards, it is really not about assenting to certain beliefs, work of our head, our brains, but it's work of our hearts. For to follow Jesus is to walk in his way. It is the way of eternal life. That is the way. And the way is what it's all about. Amen. Gracious God, you manifest your power primarily in showing compassion and love for all humanity. Listen to us as we call upon you in prayer, saying, O oh God, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. You have called your church to become a community of humble servants, having been baptized with the baptism of Jesus. Guide your people into such faithfulness that we may serve the world in your name. O oh God, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. You have become for our leaders an example of service through sacrifice. Give the rulers of this world a heart of justice and peace, and teach them that those who wish to be first must become slave of all. How manifold, O oh God, how manifold are your works. You have clothed your creation with majesty and splendor. Open our eyes to see the beauty all around us and give us a reverence. 
for the natural resources at our disposal. O oh God, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. You have promised to hear our prayers and supplications through Jesus, our great high priest. Receive the prayers we lift to you as we intercede for all who suffer throughout the world, especially for those who face tyranny, violence, oppression, or poverty. O oh God, how manifold are your works. We offer our prayers for those for whom we are called to pray, especially for Brooklyn and Joanne, and all those on our prayer list. O oh God, how manifold are your works. We offer our grateful thanks for your presence and deliverance, especially for Alex and Max serving in the military, the birthdays of Krista and Pete, and the anniversary of Reverend Linda and Tony, our outreach partners, Lori Parrish in the Diocese of Rank and La Santa Cruz Parish in the Diocese of Southeast Mexico. The United Thank Offering, the Galena ARC, the United Churches Food Pantry, Episcopal Relief and Development, Shelter Care Ministries, the Butte Rescue Mission, and all who worship in this place and those who have not yet walked through these doors are there your blessings. Let those who have died sit with the triumph, sit with the triumph of Christ in glory, as we remember especially Lester, Laura, Catherine, Anita, Alice, William, Richard, and Marvin. Are there others? Oh God, how manifold are your works. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, we pray for our rector search committee. We thank you for the ministry of Reverend Dr. Gloria Hopewell. Look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds and hearts of those who shall seek a new record for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor, one who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Through your servant, Jesus Christ, you have made many righteous, raising him from suffering into glory. Let your resurrection power be present to all in need as you strengthen us for service in your name. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns in unity and love forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Peace be with you. 
Peace be with God's you. peace be with you. Peace. Good morning. Good morning. So what is it that makes me love Grace Church and want to defend love from Costco? Being a great loser, I never imagined that I would be attending an Episcopal Church. Actually, I really didn't know what Episcopalian was. No thanks to Charlotte and, and uh, Keith, who didn't welcome us to Naperville back in 1981. We could have pulled us all out. <laughs> Since when I moved here in 2001, my expectation was to attend St. Matthew's up the hill. After all, that was an ELCA Lutheran church, the same denomination that I grew up in. After a couple of Sundays, it was evident that this wasn't the church for us. We skipped around a bit, attended most of the other Protestant churches in town, not great. Joanne and I sang the new crap, which is, by the way, the best chorale that we've ever sung, and we've sung a lot of Grant sat next to Pat Perry, who loved your voice. Pat invited us to sing with the Grace of the Friends concert in 2002. We decided to attend church on Sunday and see what the church was about. We sat behind Tom and Carlin uh, that Sunday. When the service was over, they turned around and welcomed us warmly. Now, Grant told me I couldn't tell you we were sucked in, but we were. <laughs> we had never attended a church which immediately was so good. We sang that wonderful concert. Join the church and never, ever consider the church in this time a different one. It's the people of grace that have given us such joy. I really don't recall one person who's a member that we haven't really enjoyed. Yes, we may have had our differences, but those are mitigated by acceptance of each other's opinions. Coffee hour, campaigns, visits, dinners, and all are part of this comradeship. There is no need for loneliness at this church. There is a ministry that will always be there to help you. As all of you know, music is a soul. Our French has made it seem so terrible. We packed the record, we practiced four and a half hours a week, probably a bit uh, much, I would say, but the quality of the choir was ever. The concerts that she put on made us want to never miss the practice. Music of Grace what brings us well, people back to church. I've heard from many that when the choir does not sing, the service is missing a key component. As you are all aware, Gloria will be leaving us shortly. It is imperative that we call a very competent and pastoral priest to serve grace. In the meantime, members of the church, as always, we need to pick up the slack and keep grace running as smoothly as possible. In order to do this, it is imperative that the vestry knows how much money it has to work with. For that reason, Joanne and I will again be pledging this year and providing our pledge card on Pledge Sunday in November 21. We hope that all of you will do likewise. Thanks for your support. And thanks for being our friends. Thank you, Dave. I invite her some names for birthdays and for anniversaries. So, Linda and Tony, do you want us to come back there? No? Okay. <laughs> then all of them. Are there other people who have things to celebrate that they would like to have blessed on this day? If so, please join us here. And Thursday. Thursday. Excellent. And I think, if I recall, the Marsh's actual mm -hmm. anniversary date is, is now too, right? Right. We did. We had a blessing for them uh, 
a little bit early <laughs> this year. Well, let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them and discourage their sorrow. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings, is Linda and Tony. Many blessings for this day, or for this day, but every day, and for the year to come. <laughs> Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
the gifts of God for the people of God. <laughs>
shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and giver of life, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.